can see the numbers right there. It's tied for second in the nation in blocks, leading the ACC in defensive points per game. Each individually great defenders and a terrific team defensive efforts by the Blue Devils. It is rocking at Cameron Indoor Stadium, Carolina, in what else? They're Carolina Blues. Kennedy Brown going to jump against Maria Gokdang, who has played in this building before, but for Boston College. Deja Kelly gets it into Alyssa Usby, and Usby right away attacks the rim. Now, I like that look for Usby right away. The shot fake, understanding that Duke is an outstanding shot blocking team. Duke, in fact, third in the nation in block shots. Well, you're going to see Carolina mix up their defense, going from man to zone, trying to keep the Blue Devils off balance. Ashlyn Jackson, who has not shot the ball well lately, turns it over, and turnovers have really been a problem for Duke this season. Deja Kelly is their leading scorer. Lexi Donarski, the Iowa State grad transfer, gets it back to Deja. And Renaya Kelly, they need more from their true freshmen. Zero assists in each of the last two games. And she has the ability to score as well and can score in bunches. Hunting shots is going to be another key for her as the shot clock winds down. Deja Kelly, some contact on the perimeter. That's a tough shot. Usby always hustling, not quite fast enough to catch up. Yeah, it's really tough to try to score one-on-one -on -one against this Duke Blue Devil team. And Playing together, moving the basketball, getting the ball side to side is going to be key. Duke is 11 and 2 at home. They've won eight straight. However, they were swept by North Carolina last year in the regular season before beating the Heels in the ACC tournament quarterfinals in very low scoring games. Shot clock again, winding down. Inside, Jaden Donovan, the heralded freshman, left it short. Donarski, who is a really good rebounding guard, comes up with it. Contact, they're looking play so far. Bokdang gets around Brown and got hit. Richardson actually picked up the foul, helping Brown out on defense. Courtney Banghart in her fifth season in charge at North Carolina. Bokdang heads to the free throw line. Banghart, 12 years at Princeton, where she took them to eight NCAA tournaments. And has gotten Carolina to three straight NCAAs. Bokdang delivered from the line. Duke has just gotten off one shot in the first eight minutes. There's another whistle, this time away from the action. Angelica Suffering, Bruce Morris, and Meadow Overstreet are officials this afternoon. That was a foul on Usby. Running into Reagan Richardson. Yeah, Usby just the arm right at the throat of Reagan Richardson. Richardson back rims it. Rebound. North Carolina basketball. Both of these teams, you mentioned, are terrific on the defensive end of the floor. Both have a tendency to struggle at times offensively. Getting high percentage open looks is going to be key. Both teams want to get out in transition to try to get some of those easy buckets. And that was the biggest concern for Coach Carol Lawson for Duke was keeping North Carolina from going downhill. Usby ran into Donovan that time. Donovan picks up her first personal foul. Kara Lawson won an Olympic gold medal as a player and also as the three-on-three -three head coach, or 3x3, is what the kids call it. They call it 3x3, yes. Yes, 3 x 3 yes. 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 <laughs> Kara, in her fourth season here at Duke, former colleague of ours at ESPN, Alicia Kelly, it's going to be tough on those switches to shoot over to big. So making sure you find the next action is going to be important. Take advantage with the second or third pass. Well, that's good defense by the true freshman Delaney Thomas, but Renaya Kelly 
And, and you mentioned it, you know, getting Raniah Kelly involved offensively. I love it when they use Gokdang as the screener because that puts Kennedy Brown under duress in the pick and roll. And Thomas with the basket. 6'3 freshman from Charlestown, West Virginia. Gets Duke on the board. Usby stopped by Brown who blocked her. Got it out. Kelly, two in a row. And Renaya Kelly is one of those players. The zero assists, they're not shooting the ball particularly well the last two games. It doesn't phase her. She understands moments. She steps up to the moments. And Courtney Banghart just talks about her poise and competitive fire as a young player. Yeah, Banghart really had because Kelly could be one of the best at Carolina, has great maturity for a true freshman, thrust into the point guard spot. Lusby can bring it up and does. Cut off by Thomas. Kelly thought about it. She has the hot hand. Demarski blocked by Richardson. Here comes Duke, good in transition. Mayer finishes. Defense into offense. The length, the speed, the quickness, and athleticism defensively for the Blue Devils causing some problems. Nina Mayer played her freshman season last year at Boston College. As a teammate of Maria Gokdang for one year. Gokdang, number five for Carolina. And there you got the mismatch. Trying to get it in. Beautiful pass from Kelly. And, and that's how you have to develop it. You have to take advantage on the second pass in offense or the third pass in offense. You're not going to get it right away in the two-man. North Carolina with 11 points in the first four and a half minutes. Whistle again. Bernarski looks like she might be guilty. Oh, this is an outstanding defensive effort by Richardson, able to allow the Blue Devils to get out in transition. Mayer finishing in traffic. An offensive execution for Carolina. Getting the ball, second side, multiple passes, and then taking advantage of the mismatch and the switches. Last foul on Lexi Donarski, her first for Carolina. Aaron Gockton, former teammates of BC. Contact underneath. You know, as, oh, called for the travel. And, and, and as coaches, we're often talking about guarding our yard, keeping someone in front of you. And both of these teams do a really good job of one on one individual containment. That was terrific defense by Renaya Kelly. Deja Kelly, in relation to Renaya, picks up her dribble and then threw it away. Ball goes over to Duke. Carolina off to a really good start. As they lead 11 to four, we hit our first break in Durham. She said, it's not easy. You have to attack east and west as much as north and south. You're not gonna get it in one-on-one -on -one matchups. Gotta force them to work both sides of the floor and get them in rotation. And out of the timeout, Carolina comes back out in zone. Nice flash. Richardson, they found her, but she couldn't get it to go. Nia Kelly. It's off of her. Kelly tried to sell the call, and then we see Angelica suffering. Reversing the call. This is good hustle. Loose ball, 50-50 balls. Looks like it goes off the leg of Renai Kelly. Good job by the freshman, though, to try to sell it the other way. This Duke defense, very well coached, very dialed in. And that's a foul on Deja Kelly out on the perimeter. That is the first for Deja. Deja on a bit of a roll scoring-wise after a little bit of a slump earlier this year, this calendar year. It's a great back from Brown. Espy with the defense, helped out by Kelly. And then Mayer goes right at Gokdang. And it's knocked out of bounds. Good attempt by Akinanwa, but it's still Carolina basketball. And this Duke offense right now struggling. Yeah, I mean, it was the right read to attack the seam in that zone with the decision-making once you get into that area. 
is going to be key. Turnovers have been a problem. Poor shot selection sometimes is a problem as well. Must be working on Thomas. Freshman's done a good job defensively so far. There's another block. And then a foul. Mayer is on the court. Helped up by her teammates. Second one on Deja Kelly. Well, again, terrific defense. Akanawa gets a hand on it. And then Deja Kelly going for the ball. It was a loose ball foul. And they're going to get it on Deja Kelly. Really could have gone either way. They're probably going to take a look at it because there was contact in the head. Play is under review for a possible upgrade. That is exactly what they're going to do. Kanawa involved. Well, I, I didn't see anything that warranted an upgrade. It looked like Bear was getting into Deja Kelly. Deja Kelly going for the loose ball as well. There was no extension. But that's big. Two fouls on Deja Kelly, who is the leading scorer for North Carolina this season, averaging just under 17 points per game. After review, the decision on the floor stands a common foul. Correct, right? Common foul, you common like that? Foul. Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, th th there's nothing malicious. Deja Kelly's just going for the loose ball. Mayor is in her space. Incidental contact. Mayor is okay, which is good to see. Brings the ball up. I mean, Duke is a team that runs a lot of actions in their offensive set. Sometimes when you play zone, it takes them out of those actions. And you get in a habit of passing perimeter. There's three. No. Brown had it knocked out of her hands. Kennedy thought she had a rebound, but instead it goes over to the Tar Heels. Duke has not scored in the last two and a half minutes. Kennedy Brown goes out for Duke. Duke just two of eight on the floor. figured it would be low scoring, and so far it is. Carolina has not scored since the five-minute mark. Almost forced. Usby. Well, Carolina is a pass out there. And we're going to get Usby for her second personal foul. It's going to be tough. If you're Carolina and you're trying to just attack one-on-one, -on -one, there's got to be some screening action on or off ball. You can see Usby with the reach in. Now both Deja Kelly and Alyssa Usby with two fouls. They're two most important players, and with 3-12 left to go in the first, Carolina is in the bonus. Amy Thomas, 72% free throw shooter on the season. There's Deja on the bench with two. Usby stays out there. The third point of the game. Well, on the two and a half minutes without a point. So no Deja Kelly out there. Just and watch the and watch how the Blue Devils just avoid being screened. They they are using their body. They're avoiding the contact. Recovering out to their teammates. Jackson. That is a great sign for Duke because she's really been struggling. Two for 11 from the three-point line the last three games. And Duke is a different team offensively when Ashlyn Jackson is making shots. Must be. Nope. There. After the Thomas rebound. And another play away from the ball. This is just a great look in transition. Good poise. Have the little sidestep dribble, and Ashlyn Jackson knocks it down. But the turnovers, again, right for the Blue Devils. And these, these last couple have been dead ball turnovers, but it's extra possessions for the Tar Heels. 
Nadine Navarre, the Stanford transfer, gets it back to Usby. That's a good look from Kelly into Gokden, but a better defensive play by Camilla Emsbo, who is a Yale transfer, grad transfer. Attacking the hoop, Gokden got a hand on it. Good hustle. That's two big plays by Emsbo, keeping possessions for the Blue Devils. That missed everything. Navarre, charge. Well, Ashley Jackson gets there, establishes position, takes the contact. And Carol Lawson talks about Ashley Jackson, just how many things that she does for this team that don't show up on the stat sheet. Can play multiple positions, understands where everybody's supposed to be, every possession, understands scout defense. Duke only down three because North Carolina now is in a four-minute scoring ground. Welcome those of you who just saw Notre Dame beat Florida State in double overtime. Pam Ward and Stephanie White. Duke and North Carolina, where Carolina got off to a quick start, but they haven't scored in four and a half minutes. Duke now down just one point. Anwa just picked up her first personal foul for the Devils. This is the first of two regular season matchups. And a sold out in the indoor stadium. Navarre, the transfer from Stanford, who is from Apex, North Carolina, in the triangle area here in the state. She's at the line. Both Deja Kelly and Alyssa Usby have two personal fouls for North Carolina, and neither one is on the floor right now. Inside a minute to go in the first quarter. It over to Thomas. Shot clock, single digits. Terrific dish to Ensbo. And the Devils have tied it up. And speed and athleticism. Luci Akanawa just blows right by India Navarre. Janarski will go around the, the horn to the Naya Kelly. Two best offensive weapons, Usby and Deja Kelly, not on the floor. Well, the Tar Heels got some easy scores in, early in the ball game by utilizing their five player in the on-ball screen. A one through four on-ball screen. Duke is just switching. They're so good defensively at containing and making life difficult. I think the Tar Heels are going to have to go back to some of that on-ball screen action with their five. Kanawha just picked up her second personal foul. Every Thursday, we have a women's basketball doubleheader for you on ESP, on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. Coming up, should be a good one. State at Notre Dame at 6 Eastern, and then this Duke team plays at Virginia Tech at 8 Eastern. Check it out on the ACC Network and the ESPN app, and India Navarre is gonna hear about that for a while. This is Navarre's first game in this building, and that was something that you know, both coaches talked to us about pregame. That all of these newcomers, transfers, and freshmen have never played. First off, this is a great rivalry, but when you're playing in a building like this, it's, it amplifies it. In a building like this with a sold-out crowd, you know, certainly it's a, it's a rivalry that everyone knows about, everyone's heard about, but very few of these guys have been a part of it. Like Emsbo, played at Yale. Uh, Dunarski brings it up, not much time. He just wide right. So North Carolina, no field goals in the last five and a half minutes of the quarter. They're clinging to a 13 to 12 lead after 10 minutes. Of this story series. And this is the 107th game. First team to 50. Maybe 40, the way this is going. Well, yeah, math, yeah, 50 would work. 50 would work. <laughs> Duke, Duke ended that quarter on an 8-2 to run to take the 13-12 to lead. Pam Warden 
Stephanie White joining you from the sold out Cameron Indoor Stadium. The Cameron Craze is across from us. They are standing up the entire game. Lots of folks making about a 10 mile drive from Chapel Hill to cheer on Carolina, including Courtney Banghart's three kids. First time they've seen a game at Cameron. If you ever have a chance as a fan to come see a game here, I uh, recommend it. I definitely recommend it. Tiani Key trying to get in on the offensive rebound, and she was fouled. And getting second possessions on offensive rebounds is, is going to be important. Duke does such a good job defensively. They force you into tough, contested shots. So positioning yourself to get extra possessions is important if you're the Tarians. And the Cable, the sophomore from Port Colburn, Ontario, picked up the foul. It sends key to the line. Both free throws coming back from a lower body injury of just four points in the last five games. She picks up two. And a sneaker was just tossed to an official. Anya Poole, who made, just got the rebound, is playing with one shoe. It gets tossed back. They're not calling the timeout. And she was able to just dump that back on. I guess they don't tie them very tight anymore. Kids. <laughs> Deja oh, Kelly. good D. Nice for Jackson with the defense on Deja Kelly, and eventually it ends up in a travel fourth turnover for the Heels. And I like what North Carolina is doing, mixing up their man and their zone. You go to zone, it takes away a lot of the actions that Duke likes to run offensively. Now, you were an elite point guard. What, what was that like when you saw that, you know, teams doing that, especially often? You know, back, back in those old days, and, you know, we, we, we ran a lot of zone offense. I'm not a fan of quote unquote zone offense. I think you can run a lot of your man stuff for the same actions. You just have to know the areas on the floor that are going to be open. Zone offense takes you to a, a, a place of being passive, not as aggressive. You like that aggressive. I do like that aggressive. You still have to attack the seams of the zone, whether it's off the bounce, penetrating passes. You got to find ways to get paint touches. Denarski picks up her dribble. Gets it into pool. Pool. Oh, oh Mr. Together. Yep, uh, Mr. Tayani Key had the perfect seal. But this again is what the shot clock's winding down. Deja Kelly recognizes. But this is what the zone, this is what the defense does for Duke. They force you to rush through your offense. You get a little tunnel vision. Their versatility and ability to defend multiple positions allows them to do a lot of these switches. And <laughs> Kennedy Brown with the rejection. Carolina's missed six straight field goals, and they might not get one off. Seven straight field goal misses. They have not hit from the floor since five and a half minutes were left in the first quarter. Just free throws to show and again, since then. Pardon. Early in the first quarter, Pam, when they were getting their movement, it was off of screens by their five player, the person that Kennedy Brown was guarding. Got to get back to some of that. Get a second and third pass and take advantage of your mismatch on the back side. Megan Richardson attacks, gets it back to Brown, who left it short. It's a good look, though. That's good offensive execution. Marski. Getting it over to Anya Poole, oh, who knocks it down. And that ends a big time drought from the floor. Nice pass. Good, good hesitation by Jaden Donovan, but then she missed the shot. Key, physical, couldn't get it to go. Jackson getting it over to Cable, fires away. Donarski with the good box out. And we're going to get Thomas to check that Kennedy Brown for the foul. 
Travis Usby comes back in. And with two personals, Deja Kelly still on the bench with two fouls. Deja has five points this afternoon. And some pressure now. And Mariah Kelly waves everybody off. Mariah, a freshman from Hoover, Alabama. Nice outside. Another turnover. Two best defensive teams in the ACC. We expected low scoring, and we're getting it. Yes, this is a second quarter score, not a first quarter score. We have more points in the Super Bowl. And from Carolina continuing to mix it up on the defensive end, showing zone, showing man. There, three-pointer. Navarro streaks in to get the rebound. Carolina at their best when they can run. And, and look at the transition defense, getting back on defense so good by the Blue Devils. Absolutely, and then the leak out. Richardson could not catch up in time. Davis could not save it. Or Kelly, pardon me, and the ball goes back or stays with Duke. Earl Lawson's biggest concern, hanging on to the basketball and also not letting Carolina get out in transition. Duke has not scored in this quarter, which is four and a half minutes old. Side. Picked up from Dribble and got the bucket. Four points for the BC transfer. He is a Boston, Massachusetts native. First points for Duke in this quarter. Dunarski. Give herself a defender to get a nice look. Alexi Dunarski scores for the first time today. and saw a little bit of a seam and then ran into a lot of blue shirts. Yeah, it looked like she was out of bounds. North Carolina with a five-point lead as we go under the five-minute mark. And then we'll be auctioned off to benefit a hospital foundation. That's really a cool thing to do. It absolutely is. Reporter Banghart talked to us about oftentimes you need a mental reset as much as a physical reset in your bye week. And no more mental reset than just maintaining perspective, yeah. right? They have lost three games in a row, have not played since last Sunday when they lost in overtime at home to Virginia Tech. And then Virginia Tech went into Raleigh and beat NC State on Thursday. Donarski has to do something. Usby put it on the floor, and that's not going to do it. Came over number seven for the heels. And when you come out after a timeout, you know, understanding time and score, the end of the clock, no in the shot clock, execution, I mean, you got to give the Duke defense credit. This is what they do, right? They make your life difficult. They make you grind it out. They held all but one opponent under their season average in scoring. And Carolina appears to be well under theirs. Air with the basket. Get them two within three. Anaya Kelly attacks. Lost it, but it went off a Duke player. You know, it, 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 it looks like Carolina is trying to at attack one-on-one -on -one to force a rotation, but Duke is just doing such a good job of of staying in front, of recovering if they're beat. They're not having to get in rotation, so I'm sure in the second half, they're going to come out, Carolina is, and, and find different ways to get rotation, whether that's off-ball screening, whether that's uh, you know on-ball screening in, in, in a way that they can't switch. Mayor was called for her first personal foul. This must be just two points. We should come in with five. Gokdain working underneath. Missed it wide right. 
Richardson. Checking out to Jackson, who hit a three earlier in the game, was able to collect. Great work by Delaney Thomas, the freshman. Offensive pullback. Well, I love how aggressive Ashley Jackson has been. Last three games, she has struggled from the floor. She has not shot it well. She has come out this game aggressive, attacking the rim. She, get, she got that offensive rebound. Demarski nailing the three. She's got five points, so she's nine points away from 1,500 in her career. The lion's share of those points coming at Iowa State. Antonio's coming back in there, 3-2 zone, mixing it up. Brown gets it out. Ashton Jackson, second three of the game. She had missed nine of her last 11 in the last three games, has a couple of them today. That's knocked out of bounds by Mayor Carolina basketball. Now Deja Kelly coming back in. She has two personal fouls that has limited her minutes. Uh oh, this is perfect execution. If we freeze it right here, look at this. You see Delaney Thomas. This has to be a drop on the defensive end of the floor. It opens up the backside. Kennedy Brown finds Ashlyn Jackson for the open look. That's how you get high percentage looks. Meanwhile, another foul. And Reagan Richardson. And this is the second personal foul. Second year at Duke. After she played her freshman season at Georgia. Sends Deja Kelly to the line for the first time today. Saturday's ACC Network men's basketball triple header starts with North Carolina, Virginia Tech at 2 Eastern, then Miami, BC, and Louisville Pitt. Check it out on the ACC Network and the app. Deja Kelly gets the line a lot, right? Only Angel Reese at LSU has taken more free throws this season, but that was her first trip today. With the takeaway, Bokdang kept it alive for Kelly. Just when you think the Tar Heels are going to get an advantage in transition, the Blue Devils are able to recover. Must be. That's about the extent of her range. Had the miss. And another whistle. Foul on North Carolina, Gokdang. Junior from Lanham, Maryland, right outside of Washington, D.C. Yep, got her arm up. And under Delaney Thomas's neck. And just under two minutes to go. Carolina up by three. And led by one after one quarter. Mayor. Short, but it goes right to Thomas. Sometimes the lucky bounces are a good thing. Thomas with seven, two points over her season average. That's a lead to one. Zavaya in, Alexandra Zelaya, number zero. First time we've seen her for Carolina. And had her right there on the pop. That's what she does, she spreads the floor. Kelly from the baseline. It's a tough shot by Renaya Kelly. Courtney Benhart talking about how important it is for her to hunt offensive shots just as much as facilitating. Did not score for just 18 minutes last week against Virginia Tech. Asia Kelly played most of the game at the point. Wow. Amy Thomas having herself a half. Offensively, a poor closeout, attack the closeout, great take by Delaney Thomas. And then this is a great closeout. You're square to your player. You are intentional about getting out there. Active hands defensively. And the 
Cable, a sophomore. He's played on Canadian national teams for the last few years. Sets the screen. Kennedy Brown goes over on the switch. Went to the court. And after one half of play, we got ourselves a one-point ball game. North Carolina up 26 to 25. Asia Kelly and Alyssa Usby usually average 29 points per game. They got into some foul trouble. And Deja Kelly actually just two free throws. She is 0 for 5 from the floor. So it's a one-point ball game. Lots of defense here. Justin Walter is standing by with the bucket of the ball. Welcome back to ACC Network Basketball presented by Food Lion. North Carolina and Duke, the two best defensive teams in the ACC, predictably a low score, did not see a lot of shots go into the basket for either team. Pam Ward and Stephanie White joining you. Duke doing some nice things defensively, especially. They're using their length and their athleticism to make things difficult. The block shot allows them to get out in transition. Movement on the defensive end of the floor, even on the switches containing great closeouts, multiple levels of effort, getting the 50-50 balls. And what a job Delaney Thomas did off the bench. Nine of the 11 bench points for the Blue Devils. Right place, right time. Did a work on the offensive glass. Comes up with a loose ball and gets an easy two and attacking closeouts. Having production for multiple players is important. The Blue Devils got from her off the bench in that first half. And North Carolina actually has made fewer field goals than Duke, but they're eight of 10 from the line. That is has given them the lead and Alyssa Usby and Deja Kelly averaging together 29 points per game. Usby has two points, Deja has two points. And I think if you're Courtney Banghart, you have to feel really good about where you are right now with those two being in foul trouble, not getting going offensively. Duke swept the regular season last year, or North Carolina did, pardon me, before Duke beat Carolina in the ACC tournament quarterfinals. Janiah Kelly, freshman point guard with the tip, under three seconds to shoot. The extra pass, and with a half a second left on the shot clock, a foul has been called. Yep. I mean, it's good execution. Get down to the end of the shot clock, and Ashlyn Jackson finding her teammate, Jaden Donovan. Narski picks up her second. Donovan. Free throw line. Freshman from Upper Marlboro, Maryland, coming in as a very highly rated recruit. Only a 42% free throw shooter on the season coming into this game. And as you saw, she just missed them both. So Donarski has two fouls, so does Deja Kelly and Alyssa Usby for Carolina. Usby getting in, getting into Gopdang. Good defense by Brown. Now Duke. A little bit too ambitious with the lead pass to Richardson, who tried to serve it in. He did. Duke will inbound with 25 seconds to shoot. Carolina trying to snap a three-game oh, got lost. Streak. Richardson, nope. Rebound. Usby comes away with it. That was really good execution because Deja Kelly got lost in that screen to screen action. Deja only has two free throws so far. There's a first basket. I like Deja Kelly attacking the rim, really forcing the action, getting by defenders. 20 points in six of the last eight games. Even 26 in the overtime loss to Virginia Tech the last game a week ago today. Mayer, cut off by Usby. Left wide open. Jackson back rims it. Deja Kelly with the rebound. 
Carolina team that is down to just four scholarship guards. Technically five now because Sydney Barker, a walk-on, was awarded the scholarship on Friday, but she doesn't get a lot of playing time. Shot clock again into single digits. Usby left open. Carolina does a good job to get back. He's able to pick it up. Just the fifth turnover on Duke. Duke has struggled turning the ball over in the last several games, and that's a foul on Donovan for knocking over Husky. Second one on Jaden. And the ground goes out. And then Ensbo, who gave Carol Lawson some quality minutes in the first half, checks in for Duke. Setting things up with 13 seconds left on the shot clock, a long way away from the basket. Demarski, another good closeout by Donovan. And you just can't hesitate. You know, that was a situation where I felt like Lexi Donarski was open coming off of that screen. And as soon as you hesitate, the Blue Devils are recovering. Now ball goes out of bounds with less than a second on the shot clock. Throw with the defense on Usby. Renaya Kelly inbounds. Eight tenths of a second left. So technically, time for catch and shoot. Deja, got it. And I like the off ball screening action for the Tar Heels. I think it can get them some more movement, force defenses to rotate. And now, an offensive foul. Just a little brush screen. Got dang. Gets a hold of Jackson, and that gives Deja Kelly enough time and space. Kelly with four quick points here in the third quarter. Meanwhile, Jaden Donovan has just picked up her third personal foul for Duke. And now the Duke fans getting into it. Their team down five. Got her. Got her. Oh. There's not a lot of time, fam. Must be with the fake and the bucket. recovery time when you have somebody that's open, but that is a terrific flash and attack. And Usby understands, again, this is a Duke team that likes to block shots, gives a little bit of a shot fake, stays on balance, gets into the defender, and finishes the play. Second foul on Delaney Thomas, three-point play for Usby. Let's lead up to eight is the biggest of the game for Carolina. Richardson elevates, way short. And Lesby with the heads up play. Must be a great athlete, played softball, basketball, I believe volleyball was her third sport all through high school and says that cross training she thinks really helped for Staying healthy and also just kind of like a mental break. You're not doing the same thing over and over. And I think that's why you look at Alyssa Usby and she's a Swiss Army knife of, of, of sorts. She's a plug and play. You really, she really can do anything on the floor and she's so valuable to this Tar Heel team. And apologies, her third sport was soccer, not volleyball. So softball, basketball, and soccer in high school in Minnesota. Deja. Here she comes. Yeah, I like how aggressive Deja Kelly has been early in this third quarter, not settling for contested jump shots, forcing the issue. This is just a terrific take. She's on balance. She takes the contact, able to finish the play. Saddled with those early two fouls, didn't quite get into a rhythm offensively, and is establishing herself early in the second half. Always terrific at the free throw line. And Conowa comes out. She just picked up her. Third personal foul. And Kiowa and Donovan both had three. North Carolina has started this half on a 10 nothing run. Not talking 
the single digits. Richardson driving on Donarski. And a foul call by Bruce Morris behind the play. That's the third on Lexi. Lexi Donarski tried to stay in front of Reagan Richardson and just the lean, a little bit of lean forward. And Courtney Banghart doesn't like that call. Two years ago, Donarski was the defensive player of the year in the Big 12, playing for Iowa State. Richardson gets them both. She's on the board for the first time this afternoon, averaging over 11 points per game to lead this team. Helen and Usby have all of Carolina's points in this quarter. The bonding for 10, they each had two apiece in the first half. Donarski hounded by Mayer. Must be driving on Thomas. Lamaya Kelly, good look at a three. Just rimmed out. But Usby doing Usby like things. You're absolutely right. This is exactly what she does. Hustle plays. Gets her team extra possessions. And again. Alyssa Usby was saddled with early foul trouble as well, and she just pursues the offensive rebound, is able to get it. Again, the shot fake. Gets herself a chance at the free throw line. Softball season is rolling on with the Shriners Children's Clearwater Invitational. ACC Network has five games starting Thursday morning with Kentucky and Carolina. As from Georgia Tech, UCF and Carolina finish things off. Of taking on Washington. That should be interesting coming up. Softball has started already. Can you believe it? We're playing in warmer places. I'm, I'm, sure. I'm all in on that. Carolina back into this zone after the free throw. The turnover for the Devils, just their seventh. Turnovers have been a concern for Carol Lawson and her team. Just poor decision making, particularly on entry passes, and she says that it's the receiver as well as the passer that are, are both responsible for that being successful. Must be guarded by Mayer. Doesn't take shots from out there. Renai Kelly does though. Short. Rebound ends ball. Can we get a Duke grad degree to go with her Yale undergraduate degree. It's not bad. It's a pretty good CV. Abel gets it to Ensbo. Fires. Blocked by Gokdang, who was well away from the basket. Must be driving on Thomas. Tipped. Out of bound by Cable. So North Carolina coming out of the locker room here, outscoring Duke 11 to 2 so far in the third. Well, all of the energy, all of the effort, the emotion. It's a rivalry game, Pam. Tar Heels making a statement. Well, there are a lot of players on both teams that aren't familiar with this rivalry, but these two for the Tar Heels sure are. Alyssa Usby and Deja Kelly have come out and made a statement early in this third quarter. They've been aggressive to the rim. They've attacked the mismatches. They've gotten to their spots, and they've made plays to allow the Tar Heels to stretch the lead here in the third. They only led by one after one half of play, and there you see the difference in those 11 points. Accounting for all of Carolina's points, and they came in less than six minutes. Meanwhile, Duke in the third straight quarter is out to a really slow start offensively. And they had four points in the first seven minutes in the first quarter. Two in the first six minutes of the second quarter, and just two here so far in the third. Not a good pattern. And Maya Kelly fouled on her way to the basket. This is one of those situations where if you're Taina Mayer, you gotta trust your help. Emsbo is there. She's gonna have her back, but the body prior to, and as the shot was going up by Taina Mayer. 
three fouls now on Mayer. Thursday night at 10 Eastern time. After our women's basketball doubleheader, our nothing but net crew breaks down every game in the ACC, all the coverage, and they look ahead to the week ahead on the ACC network and the ESPN app. Muffet, Kelsey, Ivory, Kelly Gramlich. Well, he's going to be with me in Blacksburg she, on Thursday. He's going to be with you in Blacksburg. You do double duty because you're cheating on me. It was fun to have the, the Nothing But Net crew yes. in NC State with us on Thursday. What a great atmosphere for the NC State Virginia Tech game. And that is a much needed three from Cable. Her first basket. And it's going to be fun to go to Blacksburg. Those fans really yes. just energized as Liz Kittley's career in college, unfortunately, coming to a close. Potentially Georgia Amor as well. Those two had a big game today and they went over BC. Asia Kelly noticed that she had some room as Ensbo did on the fake, but missed the shot. Mayor, that took a step and that's Usby. Execution against the zone defense, attacking at the high post. Look at the collapse. There is no one to get out to Emma Cable at the three-point line. But coming back, again, having an opportunity to cut into this lead and turning it over. Now, fortunately, it's a dead ball turnover, but those are important possessions for the Blue Devils. Carolina's gone over three minutes now without a field goal, another whistle. Asia Kelly, very good at drawing fouls. Duke, by the way, has three players. Now four players with three fouls apiece because Reagan Richardson just picked one up. Mayor, Conowa, and Donovan also with three for the Devils. Richardson heads out. And Asia Kelly back to her second home, the free throw line. And here you see the visual proof. Four players with Three fouls. Conowa comes off the bench as their second leading scorer. And today, Lucci is being shut out. Hasn't played a lot of minutes because of the foul trouble. She just gives this team so much energy. She's a terrific rebounder. Average just six and a half boards a game. The disparity in free throws. And Duke fans will say, hey, that's not fair. <laughs> Was that show, show with the North Carolina's being more aggressive on the offensive end? Absolutely. They're, they're being aggressive. They're getting to the rim. And in the first half, it's the, the only way they were able to score. But as you, as you look at Duke, Duke Blue Devils, and, and you look, Brett's great execution in the pick and roll. And Kara Lawson told us Ashlyn Jackson is terrific in the two-man game. She makes great decisions. She's good at facilitating. Really. But this is a team in Duke that they've been inconsistent on the perimeter. If you get their three guards, Jackson, Richardson, and Mayer, going consistently at the same time, they are a much better offensive team. They're always going to keep themselves in the game because of their defense. But to make a deep tournament run, they've got to find ways to score. He almost forced a turnover. And knocked out of bounds by Thomas. Just over four seconds to shoot for the heels. We're back in, in the screen and roll action. Duke loves this three screen, and, and it's tough for a big to get from one side to the other, and backside has to flood if you're Deja Kelly and if you're Alyssa Usby and help in that pocket pass. Carolina needs a quick shot. Gnarski. Just enough time for the fake to get rid of Cable, and she buried the three. I still think Lexi Donarski's passing up shots. I thought she had on the catch as well. She's got to be a little bit more aggressive. She is a terrific three-point shooter. Jackson, one of those people you talked about who has to hit from the outside, had a couple of early threes, but has cooled off. Deja uses her left hand really well. Man, that move right there, that was a heck of a move. Deja Kelly lulls them to sleep, thinking she's going to come back out and then just explodes by the defender. Kelly has 11 points in this quarter. Just had two free throws in the entire first half. Thomas got the roll. That was a good rotation. That was just better offense and execution by Delaney Thomas. 
Thomas with 11 points at his three off her season and career high 14 she had at Stanford. Each one in the Tough Conference and Carolina as well. That's too tall. And too late. Too late. But Carolina doing a much better job of moving the ball side to side, of forcing rotations. Nice sidestep three by Donarski. Great turnover for North Carolina. They average 13 per game. And he's trying to get Duke back into this. A three second difference between the clocks. Jackson working on the bar. Screen from Enspo. Cable with the miss. That was the shot clock, and Deja Kelly thought it was the, the game clock buzzer going off. But that is a really good third quarter, fueled by Deja Kelly and Alyssa Usby. It's a 12-point advantage for the Heels. Welcome back to ACC Network Basketball, presented by Food Lion. It is the 107th time that North Carolina and Duke have played women's basketball, two best defensive teams in the league, and the third quarter belongs to Carolina Blue. Ontario's came out after the break and established themselves offensively. They were aggressive to the rim. They moved the basketball side to side, much different than we saw in the first half. Can the Blue Devils respond? It's a team that struggles to score the basketball. The way they get going is because of their defense. Expect the full court pressure. Expect them to get out in passing lanes. Try to get turnovers for scores. One of these streaks will come to an end. Carolina has won four straight regular season games against the Devils. Duke has won eight straight at Cameron this season. Pam Ward and Stephanie White joining you on the Super Bowl Sunday. Good way to get everybody started. Still got a few hours for the game, so. I got the Chiefs, the Kansas Cities, the Kansas Cities, the Tay Tays, Donarski left it well short. Who do you have? I've got the Chiefs too. I'm just picking them. Too cheap to gamble. <laughs> <laughs> and, we're, and we'll probably see none of it. But anyway, hope everybody enjoys it. Tune in for Usher. Can't imagine what Vegas is like this weekend. Oh, oh goodness, smokes. yes. Duke's bench actually outscoring their starters in this game. Well, Delaney Thomas has been spectacular off the bench for the Blue Devils. Running some more PT. Randy Brown, no. Point blank range. And then a foul by Donovan. That's her fourth. Yeah, Kennedy Brown has struggled today. Has not been able to get one to fall. It's a good offensive rebound. Strong putback, just wouldn't fall. And again, now a dead ball, you expect the, the full court pressure by the Blue Devils. And that's exactly what they get. Renai Kelly, the freshman, has been starting at the point. This is a team that's been playing without Paulina Paris since February 14th. And she has a lower body injury called Day to Day. And they lost Kayla McPherson. She's gonna have knee surgery a couple of key components. And Mike Kelly lost her dribble from the Devils. Just nine points in that third quarter for Duke, their lowest scoring third quarter of the season. Nice look. Thomas had her roll out. Two point blank layups for the Blue Devils, the last two possessions. Must be challenged by Brown, the ball goes out of bounds and stays with Carolina, no foul call. There's Courtney Banghart, and behind her, Paulina Paris with the darker gray shirt, and I really like Kayla McPherson's game. I do too, and Kayla McPherson has struggled with injuries her entire career. And when she was able to play, you could see how explosive she was. It's a good one, it's gonna look in transition. That's how they're gonna have to get it back. They've gotta be able to create some offense from their defense off of his shots, get out in transition. First field goal for Reagan Richardson, who's their leading scorer on the season. At 11 and a half per game on average. Jackson, good defense on Deja Kelly. Donarski didn't pull the trigger. 
Usby working on Thomas, who's had a good game defensively. Usby getting creative. Delaney Thomas, the freshman from Charlestown, West Virginia. Good defense. I mean, this is just, again, great defensive effort. Alushia Conawa gets the steal. And this is when the Blue Devils are at their best. Reagan Richardson with the two. And then terrific defense by Delaney Thomas. She has been an outstanding spark for this team coming off the bench. Double-double earlier in the season against North Carolina Central. Eleven points and five rebounds today. Richardson, nope. Kanawa rescued her. Found the way to the basket. And then is hit. Drawing the foul. Octane is second. Boy, Duke has had three really good looks. He missed them all in the last minute or so. Point blank looks. Haven't been able to finish. But you see, again, the multiple levels of effort. This is what Aluchia Kanawa does. She brings that energy. Off of Dinarski. In the last four games for Duke that they have won in this building, the opponent scored 46 points. That's where North Carolina is right now. Another foul. Must be still. Thought about it. Andy Brown. Richardson defended by Renaya Kelly, who fouled her. Ball wouldn't roll in, but Richardson has a chance at the free throw line. It's a good take by Richardson. And that's one of those, you, you just got to make her hit tough shots. If they hit those tough shots, you live with them, but don't want to bail them out by fouling. Third foul on Dockdown. Every Thursday, we have a women's basketball doubleheader on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. And look at this one coming up. Notre Dame with a double overtime win today against Florida State. Hosts NC State at 6 Eastern, and then Duke at Virginia Tech. Follow that up on Thursday. Boy, some of these teams, we talked with Coach Lawson about it before the game. You look at the schedules, especially on that side. You know, they, they divide it up every year. I mean, the, the, Duke, NC State, Virginia Tech, Carolina, they have, they have some games coming up. They've got a gauntlet coming up. And, you know, it certainly doesn't get easier when you think about this league, you think about the division that they are in. She said the only way to get up to rise in the standings is to beat the teams above you, and that's a good way to look at it, because they certainly are going to be playing a lot of teams above them, and they're tough teams, starting with Virginia Tech after this one. Good luck, Delaney Thomas with the finish. It's only a six-point game. Cameron coming alive. It's back to the end of the third quarter. They're only down by six. And Delaney Thomas, the freshman, one point away from a career high. Six of seven from the floor. The rest of her teammates shooting an anemic 26%. Well, they did a great job of finding her here. The pass by Ashlyn Jackson in the two-man game and the strong finish. But Delaney Thomas, you see what she's done offensively, but she's been terrific defensively. She's been rebounding the basketball. It's important in these types of games and these types of matchups to get production from the bench, and she's been huge here today. Absolutely. Key in this 8 nothing run and getting the fans at a sold-out Cameron Indoor Stadium back engaged in this game, they have outscored Carolina 6-0 in this quarter. Going back to the third quarter, Carolina's gone five and a half minutes without a point. And we saw that in the first half as well. Carolina finds some things that are working for them offensively, and then the Blue Devils adjust defensively, take it away. are straightening out some foul assessment. 
Donovan with four. Conowa now with three. Trying to make sure that that was crystal clear and we are ready to go. Stagger screen for Kodarski. Good defense by Richardson. All over Lexi's. The shot clock goes into single digits. Deja Kelly. Behind the back, elevates, top shot. Got fouled. Now, Conowa has four fouls. Deja Kelly, this is just trying to make something out of nothing. Does a really good job of creating space. And Conowa gets her on the follow through. Back at the line. 70% free throw shooter, averages about seven and a half free throw attempts per game. Very good at drawing fouls and then delivering when she gets to the line. She's got 15 points, 13 of them here in the second half, and those are the first points for Carolina in this quarter. Figures with 10 points, lead back to six. Richardson goes for the foul and instead gets too much of Donarski. And I believe that's the fourth on Richardson as well. It is indeed. And Richardson just really making Donarski work. She is on her hip every time. Donarski's trying to come off of the screen. So now three Blue Devils have four fouls, Okonawa, Richardson, and Donovan. Deja Kelly over Kennedy Brown. Cool with a big offensive rebound. Out of this match, go to work. And she does. Ospie. Never given up on a play. But the possession arrow points in favor of the Devils. Just when you think if you have a rebound, here comes number one. She just pursues out of area rebounds. She's got a motor, she's got an instinct and the will. That's a lot of what rebounds are about. Sure is. Oh, she thought about it. Little Kezi, and it went in. Oh. Her first point of the game. Coming into this game in conference play, one of 10 from the three-point line. That was a big one. Second leading scorer during the regular season, averaging 11. That's her first points of the game. Four point ball game. Usby with the little step through. Good D. Off the rim. Good D. That's Delaney Thomas, continuing to make an impact. Can't spell Delaney without a D. She's been terrific. We've got a 13 to 2 run. Kennedy Brown, two. Strong off glass. Must be leading the way. Gets it back to Deja Kelly. Short. And then a foul on North Carolina. Cool. Picked up her first. She is still on the floor. We're going to take a break. Duke on a big time run. official grocer of the ACC. Welcome back to Cameron Indoor Stadium. Pam Morton and Stephanie White joining you on this Super Bowl Sunday. And Duke on a 13-2 run. The two points for Carolina in this quarter coming just from the free throw line. Rich Kelly came out smoking in the third quarter. Delaney Thomas, the freshman, having the game of her young collegiate life. And Carolina Seeing their double-digit lead dwindle down to just three. Thomas, who else? Delaney Thomas ties her career high and has a chance for a three-point play. 
again, Ashlyn Jackson with the facilitating. Delaney Thomas understands how to position herself with the cuts to the rim, gets into the defender. That's a tough finish. Fourth foul on Usby. And Delaney Thomas now with a new career high in scoring. She's got 16 points and is, more importantly, tied this game up. led by 14, and since that 14-point lead has only scored two points, those are free throws, that's it. Anaya Kelly, first field goal since the third quarter for the Heels. And I really like it when Carolina puts Maria Gokdang in the screen and roll, forcing Kennedy Brown to make a decision. Gives it back over to Mayer. Shot clock at seven. Here's Jackson. Connor gonna have to shoot. Extra pass. Mayer got it off just in time. And beat the buzzer with the three. Duke leads for the first time in this game. Kelly well short. Gokdang couldn't handle it. Scramble. I mean, the shot clock winding down. Mayer had to get it off and nothing but the bottom of the net. The bench loving that. What a comeback for the Devils. seconds to shoot. Gnarski dribbles into the teeth of the defense, drew a foul and hit the shot. That is a heck of a finish by Lexi Gnarski. Going to the left. Look at the crowd she's in. Takes the contact off the glass. Yes, that is a strong finish. Campus is only about eight miles apart. Donarski, first time she has played in a Carolina Duke game, but in Iowa State, they had some pretty, pretty good clashes with Iowa. That Iowa State-Iowa matchup is a pretty tough one, too. But you got to be really active on the defensive end right here. This zone has not been effective in the fourth quarter. One of the few Mistakes by Thomas as she missed the shot in the paint. Duke won eight straight games at home, but they have had trouble with Carolina in the regular season the last couple of years. Asia Kelly, the veteran, hanging on the ball for a few extra seconds. And then dribbles into a double team. Possession arrow to Duke. Number 13 for Carolina. Duke doing a good job hanging on the ball with just eight turnovers. Chance to tie or go ahead. They've hit five of their last seven shots. Fury has come back after being down by 14. Gokdang, good recovery with the block. I think they're calling a foul from the backside. They did indeed. And if I'm Courtney Banghart, I'm thinking about changing up that 3-2 defense. Maybe go to a 2-3 if you want to stay in the zone. Playing some man-to-man -man has been effective, but Duke has found the recipe to score in that 3-2. In that Saturday, a triple header in the men's basketball on the ACC Network. Virginia Tech, Carolina, Miami, BC, and Louisville, Pittsburgh coming up on Saturday. Lockdang picked up the foul. And now we have ourselves a tie ball game. Okinawa, Okinawa, pardon me, delivering at the line. Okinawa now with five points. We are tied. We will take a quick 30 second timeout tie ball game in Durham.
Laney Thomas has been brilliant. The freshman with a new career high, 16 points. Six rebounds, Donarski inbounds. Duke on a 21 to seven run to a race of 14 point deficit. Carolina has had success when they've gotten the ball moving side to side, multiple actions. So you're gonna see it right here, up screen, probably into a fade. Donarski, guarded by Conowa. Shot clock winding down. Top shot, well short, here come the Devils. Conowa had it taken away by Deja Kelly, who stuck her hands in there. And you got plenty of timeouts. If you're Courtney Banghart and you don't like what you're gonna get. Both teams have three timeouts. Maya Kelly finally advances. Reagan Richardson, now Kennedy Brown. With the defense, chance and pass, knocked out of bounds by Brown. The shot clock went off, but they're gonna go back and talk about it. Well, and what a hustle by Kennedy Brown to get back into play. Gonna look at it, see what the time looks like, and end of the shot clock. Trying to get it into Gokton. Kennedy Brown gets up from the floor, gets back into play, and able to deflect this out to determine out. the time on the shot clock. And they are going to look to see if time should be put back on the shot clock, like maybe about a second. After the ball was deflected out of bounds, after the hustle play by Kennedy Brown. Duke does such a good job, though, when you load it up on the side of executing in that pick and roll defense. You see it right here. Kennedy Brown gets a hand on it. Seven point eight by the time it hits the ground. Looks like point nine. So enough time for a catch and shoot. Remember the last time they were in a low clock situation. The screen, cross screen, the free throw line for Deja Kelly, who got a pull up. These two teams will close out the regular season against each other March third. Three weeks from now, the regular season coming to a close. That game will be at Carolina on ESPN. It'll be tough to match this finish. So .9 seconds put back on the shot clock. North Carolina will inbound under their own basket. Donarski throws it in. They're not guarding the ball. Trying to get Kelly off the screen. Instead, Usby catches off last note. Nakanawa gets it up to Richardson, who's fouled. Uh, they, they blew the whistle. Carol Lawson was calling a timeout. It's so loud that the players didn't hear it. It's hard to tell. I saw the official from behind blowing the whistle and calling for the stoppage in play. That is one of those when you're a coach and you're calling time out and then all of a sudden your team has the advantage. But you can see the trail official right here talking, pointing to, to Carol Loss and calling a timeout. Waving it off. Oh, no, over street. So we wipe out, no foul, no free throw attempts. It's a timeout by Duke. And it looked like she was calling the timeout on the rebound to advance the ball. Shot clock is off. Still two timeouts remaining. If you can't get the ball inbounds, if you're the Tar Heels, you got to play good position defense. And if you're
you're the Blue Devils, you want the last shot. Ashlyn Jackson calls another timeout for Duke after they looked at the alignment on the defensive side. So North Carolina trailed, or led, excuse me, by as many as 14 points late in the third quarter, and Delaney Thomas has had herself an afternoon. Yeah, she's been terrific off the bench for the Blue Devils, getting involved in a lot of different ways, offensively, defensively, rebounding the basketball, making herself available on cuts with and without the ball in a two-man game. And anytime you have a matchup like this, a rivalry game where your starters log heavy minutes, bench production is, is critical, and Delaney Thomas has given it to the Blue Devils. A new career high for her in scoring with 16 points, seven of nine from the floor, also has contributed six rebounds. Here we go, Kanawha gets it right back to Jackson. Going to end up in some form of on ball screen. Andy Brown comes out to set a screen. Jackson trapped. Taken away by Renaya Davis. And then she ran into Reagan Richardson. Held ball with a half a second left. I like the call by Courtney Banghart to be aggressive in the on ball screen, to bring the trap, to blitz it, forcing a turnover. And Renaya Kelly didn't have numbers, but was going to the rim. And that's a terrific individual defensive play by Reagan Richardson to defend without fouling. And now point five on the clock. North Carolina basketball. up. Point five. Got to be able to find some sort of tip action. Probably look for a screen, the screener, maybe throw it up for Usby. Usby, Deja Kelly, Renaya Kelly, Anya Poole, and Lexi Donarski. Gonna throw it in for Carolina. You're gonna see Kennedy Brown on the ball. Be a big, big target to throw over the top. 6'6. Six, six. Donarski to Usby for the win, and it goes off the rim. Everything went well except for the shot for Carolina. She's trying to get it up there so quickly. And oftentimes when you do that, you're strong on the, on the shot. This is a good read, a good catch, trying to get it up quickly. Just a little too strong. Well, we couldn't get better execution. And I love it, the misdirection. Everybody thinking Deja Kelly's probably gonna get a touch, but us be on the back cut, just off the mark. We are headed to overtime in Durham. Coach Banghart and her team. And I think if you're Courtney Banghart, you feel good about escaping the the regular the regulation into overtime because Carolina did not move the ball well offensively. Give Duke credit for locking down on the defensive end. Blue Devils got out in transition, and boy, Delaney Thomas has been special. Absolutely, and she is rewarded with still being out there on the floor. Usby and Brown tip off overtime. Carolina gets the first possession. Zanarski, the pool, who will not shoot from out there. Now Deja Kelly got Richardson up in the air. Green from Poole on the switch. He's guarded by Brown. Usby just pulled her way into the paint. Kelly. Got it! What a heads up play by Alyssa Usby. The ball comes back to her. She knows Deja Kelly's available. 
And Deja Kelly knocking it down. More hustle from Usby. Big three for Deja. Thomas and Usby bodying up on the paint or on the post. Oh my goodness! Everything going for Delaney Thomas. And this Usby playing with those four fouls has to stay vertical, but Thomas delivers. Awkward shot, but banked in. Usby working on Thomas on the other end. Had to shoot it. Ottawa gets it over to Jackson, who settles things down. Come back to the same play, the diagonal screen, really going at Usby. Oh, that's it for Usby. She tried to draw, draw the charge, but instead was called for her fifth personal foul. Usby tries to get in position. No, that's a tough one because she doesn't move. She doesn't hip check her. Delaney Thomas just tries to go around. That's a tough call to get your fifth on. Usby, six points, nine rebounds, just two of 14 from the floor, but unlimited hustle plays. 19 points for Delaney Thomas. Rims out, rebound. Okanawa, Kennedy Brown, fouled on the follow. Free throw box outs. Just a terrific hustle play by Okanawa. Navarre gets her with the arm, but that's not enough. Aluchi Okanawa is persistent multiple levels of effort, and then the 50-50 ball that Kimmy Brown comes up with. Third foul on Navarre. Kimmy <laughs> Brown has just scored her first points of the game. Averages eight per contest. <laughs> Two big ones. Three-point advantage is the largest of the game for the Devils. Well, by as many as 14 late in the third quarter. Anaya Kelly, pull up, there we go. Anaya Kelly is so good when she gets to that mid-range. I think she's got a hunt shots when she's got the ball in her hands. Nia Kelly, the true freshman, hits the shot to top. Attacking the paint, getting to the rim, getting to the foul line, finding her spots. Good with the ball in her hand, certainly going to the rim. And I think the difference, that's a huge three right there by Alyssa Usby, but the ability to have Deja Kelly play off the bounce and Renaya Kelly play off the bounce gives Carolina options. Renaya Kelly, the true freshman, playing mostly point guard and Alyssa Usby is fouled out of this game. There's Courtney Banghart in the huddle. And you can see her talking to her team about rebounding. You've got no Alyssa Usby on the floor right now. It's not just turning and going to get the boards, because that's not going to happen. Duke is really good and really athletic. You've got to be disciplined to make contact, initiate first, then release to go get it. Duke shooting 39% from the floor today. Carolina just 33. Lane Thomas leading everybody with 19 points. Deja Kelly 18 for Carolina. Carol Lawson talking to her team about guarding one-on-one. -on -one. Individual ownership and accountability. Contain the drive. And if you're Carolina, you want to get back to maybe some of that off-ball screening action that forced a little bit of a help, a little bit of a rotation, enough time to be able to get an open high percentage look. Both teams. See Duke in the bonus, also have the possession arrow in their favor.
basketball. A little full court pressure from Carolina as Jackson will inbound the mayor. Richardson had it partially blocked by Poole. Got a mismatch. Didn't see it, didn't see it, and Brown took the ball. That's the decision making at times. Yes, there is the ability to take Kennedy Brown off the bounce, but finding the right play. Kennedy Brown, huge offensive putback. Her first field goal of the day. Kennedy Brown has struggled most of this ball game, but has come up with two big plays back to back at the free throw line and the offensive rebound put back. Navarre has not done much offensively today. Short by Cole. Great hustle. And Kelly runs in there to grab the ball, but it's Duke's basketball with the possession arrow. The three-point shot, Anya Poole has to go out to contest, and that leaves only Littles inside for the Tar Heels, and Kennedy Brown gets the offensive rebound put back, and this is just great hustle by Renaya Kelly to try to get the extra possession with the jump ball going the Blue Devils' way. Jackson over to Richardson, great look. For Duke. And a foul has been called as well. It's on Navarre who picks up her fourth. And it was after the shot went in. So Duke has a chance to get four points in this trip down the floor. That's a tough call on Indy Navarro. She had a great angle, but looking at her, it just looked like she was attempting to box out. It is, in effect, a four-point play for Duke. Gives him the six-point advantage. Navarre did not pull the trigger. Here's Deja Kelly, so good at drawing fouls, but not the bucket. And we gotta get a stop. Stop and a rebound. Deja Kelly with another 20-point game. Seven of her last nine, she has hit that 20-point mark. Defensive energy right now if you're the Tar Heels. Duke is going to get into multiple actions, look for some triple handoffs. Stay in the play and finish it. Oh. Under a minute to go, almost threw it away. Mayor, three! Taina Mayor! Buries it to get the lead back to seven. Donarski with the drive, offensive foul! And boy, this one was huge. But they throw it away momentarily. Richardson took it back. Lenorski forced a foul. And that is her fifth. The Blue Devils have Carolina on the ropes right now. What a comeback for the Devils. So overtime, the last two games has not been kind to North Carolina, Virginia Tech. 
last week, their last game a week ago today, outscoring them in the overtime 16 to seven, and Duke very similar here today. Now North Carolina, as Mayor goes to the line for the first time today, Carolina had a chance to win this in the last play of regulation. Just off the mark by Alyssa Usby. She gets open, probably anticipating contact, trying to rush the shot with 0.5 on the clock. And a beautifully run play, but just too much on it for Usby. It was a tie game at that point. Carolina could have won it in regulation. Instead, they're being outscored here 15 to seven in overtime. Well, look, Duke locked down in the fourth quarter on the defensive end of the floor, held North Carolina to seven points, made their life difficult, and that has continued through the overtime. Offensively for Duke, they were able to get going because of that defense. They had 34 points through three quarters. They have 34 points since then as well. So Duke has found it on the offensive end of the floor. Boy, what a day on the ACC Network. We had double overtime before us. Notre Dame beating Florida State. Now we have this overtime between Carolina and Duke. Gymnastics coming up. They don't have overtime in gymnastics, do they? Uh, I don't know that they do. I don't <laughs> think that that's the case. <laughs> oh. All right, so our overtime string will stop. It might stop. <laughs> well, what an afternoon it has been. Carolina and State. Gonna have gymnastics coming up next. But boy, what a win this would be for Duke if they can hang on in the final 28 seconds. Down 14 late in the third, down 12 heading into the fourth. Short ball goes out of bounds, stays with the heels. North Carolina. Post Pittsburgh after this game, Duke goes to Virginia Tech. We'll have that game for you Thursday on the ACC Network. Cool? Nope. And the Duke Blue Devils are gonna come away with the victory. They call a timeout, even though it looked like North Carolina wasn't gonna foul. And all of Cameron goes crazy right now. Yeah, I think Carol Lawson had talked about in the huddle. Shot goes up, we get the rebound, we want to call a timeout, we want to advance the basketball. But what an effort by the Blue Devils. Looks like in the third quarter they're going to be run out of the gym. But you certainly know with the way that they defend, they will always be in ball games. And they found it offensively in the fourth quarter in overtime. Sold out crowd. And they're already feeling it. Duke has made its last three shots from the floor to pull away. Right now, the current run, 34-14 Duke, after falling behind by 14 to their arch rivals. Inbound. Carolina is not going to foul. And the Duke Blue Devils come away with an improbable win. Down 14. And they take it in overtime. Home win streak extends to nine. First time they've beaten Carolina in the regular season since 2020. Can't wait for the rematch as they close out the regular season in Chapel Hill in a few weeks. March 3rd, mark it on your calendar. Delaney Thomas, the true freshman, was terrific. 19 points, a career high, 8 of 10 from the floor. For Stephanie White and our entire great crew here in Durham, I'm Pam Ward. As we say, so long, let's do some gymnastics.